In today's lesson, we're actually going to do a demonstration together. We're going to look at another GeoGebra sketch, which is going to let us test out the idea of, well, what sides can we actually use to make a triangle? So you'd think, hey, I can draw any three sides, connect them, and make a triangle, but there's actually requirements for the lengths. So you can do this demonstration or this activity two different ways. So if you want, you can follow along with me, in which case I would pause the video and copy down this first chart, the one that starts with the 555 and has the six problems on it. However, if you'd like to try this on your own, you can absolutely do so. I'll leave a comment below this video on where you can start the video if you go through to try on your own. So let me switch over to that screen. Here we go. So we are testing the triangle inequality, which states that the sum of the lengths of two sides of a triangle is always going to be greater than a third. So the question is, can the following sides that we have on there actually create a triangle? So in this demonstration, I actually have uh, three segments. And I can pull these segments around, twist them, and move them however I need to. And I've got these three. Um, kind of slider bars down below. And if I slide them, it'll change my length. But I could also go wild and crazy and just type it in. And I could type in the length if it's not getting me the exact number. So let's test out these combinations. So the first one is 5, 5, and 5, the one we start with on the demo. So we need to try to put together our three sides and see, can we connect them to make a triangle? So we're going to, we can actually, if you use kind of the grid lines, that'll kind of let them kind of snap to grid and let you line them up a little easier. And so I'm going to have to twist this around a little bit, but I'm pretty sure I can make, there we go, it's not quite perfect, but pretty darn close. I can definitely make a triangle out of lengths 5, 5, and 5. Actually makes an equilateral triangle, so I kind of knew that one was going to work. So next one to test out is three, five, and eight. And again, on your paper, you're just going to write in that block for the moment. I would write it down at the bottom right that, yes, these triangle, these links make a triangle. So let's try our next one. So we need three, five, and eight. So we're going to change the first one to a three. And we're going to change side C. Let's change that to the eight. And then we're just going to pull these around and see if we can make that triangle. And again, it should work. So I'm going to pull this three up so it hits the top of the five. And then let's see. Well, it's going to let me twist along this way. So let me move it this way. And again, as long as I can twist them around and get everything connected, then it's going to wait a second. Um, I'm running into a problem. I'm not quite lining up. I need to have these perfectly overlapped. Oh, it's still not quite there. Oh, to get them lined up perfectly, I got to have them pretty much as a straight line. So that tells me, yeah, this one really doesn't work. If I'm going to get the points actually lined up, I don't have any more space in between them. So three, five, and eight doesn't work. OK, let's try the next one. So three, seven, and nine. So let's change the second one to a seven and the third one to a nine. Alrighty. So let's see if this one works. So here's our long side nine. Here's our short side three. I think we're, yeah, this one's going to work. We definitely have enough space that we can line our points up so they perfectly overlap. Again, a little kind of finagly needed, but we've got lots of space in between. So three, seven, and nine definitely works. OK, next one, 10, 3, and 6. So let's leave the 3 where it is. So we're going to change this guy. Let's change him to the 6. And we'll change the 9 to the 10. And again, I don't think we're going to have any problems with this. Let's see. So 3, uh-oh. Um, yeah, is this one going to work? Even if I straighten it perfectly, yeah, it doesn't work. Even if I try to get it going the other direction, nope, they're not going to connect. So 10, 3, and 6 doesn't work. How about 4, 5, and 6? OK. 
So let's change this to four. B will change to five. C will change to six. And again, I could use the slider bars, but this means I've got it that much more exact. Because again, when I was doing the slider bars, you'll notice it's very, very accurate. Very, very small steps. And I might not even be able to get that very easily with my mouse. OK, let's see here. So this is the five. There's the four. So let's see if I can twist the four around. Hey, this one is going to work. Again, takes a little finagling, but I can line them up. And my five is a little bit off, but that one will work. I can't quite get that with the overlapping points, but I know it makes a triangle. So four, five, six works. So then last one to check is four, five, and nine. So let's just change our measure for angles for side C. And that one should be nine. Okay. So what do you think? Let's see, there's more. Let's move the four up to that guy. Hmm. I'm gonna have the same problem on this one. To get them perfectly overlapped, I've got to have a really straight line. There's no space in there, there's no actual triangle. So four, five, and nine doesn't work. Okay, so let's think about our results. So we decided that five, 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 yep, that one worked. Three, five, eight didn't work. Three, seven, nine, that one worked. That one was a yes. 10, three, and six, eh, not so much. Four, five, and six, that one worked. But our last one, four, five, and nine didn't work. So can you see any patterns on here? And you've got a hint below this chart, you know, add the two smallest sides together on the combinations that didn't work. So let's try this. So the first one that didn't work, three and five. Well, if I do three plus five, that equals eight. Huh. Well, let's compare that to something with, that did work. Let's see, two smaller sides, we have five plus five. Well, compare that to just a five. Well, five plus five, that's 10. 10 is bigger than five. And three, seven, and nine. Well, if I had two smaller sides, three and seven, so three plus seven, compare that to nine. Well, wait a second, three plus seven is 10. That's bigger than nine. Three plus five is eight. That's equal to eight. It wasn't bigger. So triangle inequality states, two sides have to add up to be bigger than the third to make a triangle, there's our proof. And we can actually check that on the other two no's as well. So again, always use the two smallest sides. If this test is gonna fall apart, it's always gonna fall apart with the two smallest values. So three plus six, compare that to 10. Well, that's just nine, it's less than 10. That one didn't work, bummer. Let's see, four, five, and nine. Again, four plus five, compare that to nine because those were my two small sides. And it's actually equal, and it didn't work. When you add your two smallest sides, it has to be greater than the third. So go ahead, pause the video, and try out this next set without using that demonstration. Alrighty, so if we're just using the rule, add the two smallest sides, you should have found number one works, three plus four is seven, greater than six. Number two doesn't work. Six plus nine equals 15, it's not bigger. 888, eight, eight, perfect equilateral triangle, that one works. Two, four, and five, yep. two plus four is six, bigger than five. Three, four, and five absolutely works. Three plus four is seven, bigger than five. And then four, eight, and 16, eh, four plus eight is only 12, that one's not going to work. So the last piece of this idea, kind of another corollary, kind of an add-on, is, well, what if they only give you two sides? Is there a way for you to figure out how big that third side could be? And so there's a task that two students did at one point. John and Paul both drew a triangle. Uh, they were told to draw a triangle EFG, where FG had side lengths of 13, and EF had side length 5. And so the question is, who actually created a valid triangle? So if we use our trick, let's see here. So again, take your two smallest sides. Well, for John's triangle, that was 5 and 10. So 5 plus 10, that's going to give me a 15, which is definitely bigger than 13. So John's works because 5 plus 10 is bigger than 13. 
Why did polls not work? Well, again, if we take our two smallest sides, three, or excuse me, five and eight, eh, problem is five plus eight, well, that just gives me equal exactly 13. Yeah, that one's not gonna work. We have to be bigger than, it can't be equal, it can't be smaller. So then the next question is, well, what are the possible lengths of side GE? Well, there's two ways for us to actually think of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and call GE just X. And if we use that rule, that the two smallest sides have to add up to be greater than the third. So if I'm given my three sides, 13, five, and the one we don't know, X. So let's test the different combinations. Well, what if five and X are the small sides? So five plus X has to be greater than 13. So to solve that out, just like an equation, we would subtract five from both sides. So X has to be bigger than eight, okay. Well, let's see here. What if 13 and X were the smallest sides? Well, that's not gonna work because already there's another side five that's smaller. So we don't even have to consider that arrangement. But what if 13 and five were the smallest sides? So let's check that. So 13 plus five would have to be greater than X. So actually, let me move that over. There we go. Okay, so 13 plus five, well, that's 18 greater than X. But if I flip that around, it's we usually keep with inequalities, we like to keep the X on the left, just make sure the inequality is pointing towards the same thing. So X is less than 18. So if I put those together, my X is actually sandwiched in between an eight and an 18. So anything between those two numbers, but not equal to them, is going to be the possible range for that third side. So what did we do? Well, to find the eight, to find the low end of the range, we subtracted five from 13. So if we're given two lengths A and B, we're gonna subtract A and B. And again, you're gonna wanna do whichever one's bigger minus the smaller value because does it make sense to have negative numbers in geometry? Okay, then to get the other one, we added those two lengths. So we would add A plus B. And again, order doesn't matter on that because addition is always commutative. So let's apply this to a couple problems and then we're all set. So you try, let's do a couple of these together and then you try the others on your own. So if we're given one and six, so again, we want to subtract them to get the low end of the range. So six minus one, AKA five. And then we're gonna add them to get the high end of the range. So six plus one is seven. So actually let me write that properly. So six plus one. And then your X value, your missing side has to be sandwiched in the middle. So we can write the inequality five is less than X, which is less than seven. Okay, let's try that with number eight. Again, subtract for the low end, add for the high end. So low end 18 minus 12, well, that gives us six, and then high end, 18 plus 12. Well, that's gonna give us 30. And so our X has to be sandwiched somewhere in the middle. So six is less than X is less than 30. Go ahead and pause the video and try the last two on your own. Alrighty, so if you followed the steps, again, even though we have decimals, this is still gonna work. So we would wanna do 5.5 minus 1.5. And this is something definitely, if you're not quite sure, or you just wanna double check your work, again, plug it in the calculator, no problems. That's gonna give us a four. So then we have to do 5.5 plus 1.5, which will give us a seven. So our X is sandwiched in between four and seven. 82 and eight, doesn't matter that the numbers are really far apart. Again, we don't even have to try testing it out. Even the demo, I think the maximum value you could have on there, I think was a 15. So we wouldn't be able to test this one out on the value on the demo, but we can just use our kind of add and subtract trick. So 82 minus eight will give us a 74. 82 plus eight gives us a 90 and our X is sandwiched in the middle. 
So keep in mind when you're looking at these, any of these values that are sandwiched in the middle, that means if we have like X has to be something bigger than 74, that means I could include 74.00001, but I cannot include 74. Same thing on the other end. We can have X is less than 90. So I could have 89.99999 as far as you wanted to go out, but I can't use 90. I can only get really, really close to it. And I would have a really, really skinny triangle, but it would give me enough room that I could kind of pop up that one point and still have a little space in between. So again, rule of thumb, add your two smallest sides together. They should be bigger than the third, and it makes a triangle. Looking for the range, subtract to make the low end, add to make the high end, sandwich your S in the middle. Let me know if you have any questions, and if not, check out your practice.